Let's find the commutator of momentum and a function of position. First, I want to review the canonical commutation relation introduced in the previous video in the quantum mechanics playlist. So let's write down the commutator of position and momentum. So we can write that using the square bracket notation. So x with a little hat is the position operator, and p with a little hat is the momentum operator. And that is defined in the following way. First, we write xp, and we'll put little hats on top to uh, denote that these guys are operators in quantum mechanics. And then we'll subtract off p, x. And again, we need those little hats. And if you remember from the previous video, we can actually factor out a minus sign. If we factor out a minus sign, this is going to switch the order of those two terms. So first we'll have px, and then we'll subtract off xp. So we have xp. And you can see that this has the same form as this, but the order is swapped. So we can write it in the following way. We can write it as minus the commutator of momentum and position. This relationship is sometimes called anti-symmetry. So the commutator is anti-symmetric because if you swap the order of the two operators that you're taking the commutator of, it introduces a minus sign out the front. So what is this actually equal to? Well, the commutator of position and momentum is equal to i h bar. And we found this out in the previous video. And from this anti-symmetry relationship, we can also conclude that the commutator of momentum with position, well, that is equal to minus i h bar. If we change the order inside the commutator, we introduce a minus sign over here. So this is the canonical commutation relation. And we actually generalized it to three dimensions with the Kronecker delta symbol in the previous video. But in this video, what I want to do is I want to take momentum and a function of position. I want to take the commutator of that. But first, let's write down the definitions of the position and momentum operators. And we're working in the position representation. So in the position representation, what we're going to have is position, the position operator, is going to be defined as just multiplying by x. So an operator is always going to be acting on something. We're actually going to be acting on a test function. And when we act on the test function with the position operator, it's the same as just multiplying by x. Momentum is a little more complicated. The momentum operator, p hat, is going to be defined as h bar over i, or you can also write this as minus i, because dividing by i is the same as multiplying by minus i. And then we're going to have d dx. And I'm not going to write this as a partial derivative, because we're not going to be dealing with y and z in this video. This is a purely one-dimensional case that we're going to be looking at. But if you want to generalize to higher dimensions, then this has to turn to a partial derivative. And also, if you have time dependence, uh, and you don't want to be differentiating with respect to time, you want to turn this into a partial derivative with respect to x. So here we have the position operator and the momentum operator. Now, let's find the interesting commutation relation that I want to investigate in this video. So what I want to see in this video is what happens when you take the commutator of P with some function, call it capital F, of X. So it's a function of the position operator. And we can see a special case of this, a special case where the function is just equal to X. That's this over here. We have minus I H bar. So this is a special case of this more general relationship over here. So what do you think this is going to be? Well, it's probably going to involve an i h bar with a minus sign. But there's definitely going to be something else, because we have to incorporate this function somehow in the commutation relationship. So what this function is, is going to depend on the specific uh, thing that we specify it to be. So this could be x squared. It could, be, it could even be sine of x. It could be any random combination just as long as it's a function of the position operator. So let's go ahead and investigate this commutation relation. 
So we need to act with this on some test function. So I'll put a test function over here. We'll call it phi. We could call it phi, psi, or anything. So phi, I'm going to say, is a function of x. And for the rest of, of these guys over here, I'm not going to put a little hat over x because x with a little hat is just the same as x if we're working in the position representation. So I'm going to neglect to put that hat over there. And I'm also, I'm not going to put these little brackets over here uh, to signify that these guys depend on x because that is very clear from the definition over here. And I don't want to clutter it with too many unnecessary details. So let's go ahead and apply this commutator onto the test function. So what is that going to give us? Well, if we look up here, this is the definition of a commutator. First, we have to apply PF, and then we have to apply FP with a minus sign. So let's do that. First, we're going to have P, and I'll keep the hat for P over here. Then we're going to have F, and F is going to act on phi. And we can actually put brackets around here. So F is acting on phi, and once F is acting on phi, we're going to act on both of these guys on the result with p. And then we're going to have to subtract off the reverse. So we're going to have f, and then we're going to act with p. So this is f over here, and I'll put some brackets. We have p, and this is our test function phi. And as I said, I'm neglecting to write a little bracket notation that tells us that it's a function of x. So now let's write this out in full. We have the definition for the momentum operator. So I'll write that underneath. So what do we get? We get h bar on i, and then we have to take a derivative with respect to x of this product. So we will have to use the product rule. We had to use the product rule in the previous video where we derived the canonical commutation relation as well. So this is what we have over here. We're taking a derivative with respect to x of this product. What about over here? Well, over here, we're acting on with f, and inside, we have the derivative. So we're swapping the order. We have h bar over i, and we have d dx of phi. So this is phi over here. So this is just the momentum operator acting on phi. And now let's have a look at what, what's going to happen when we expand this out with the product rule. We can see that there's an h bar on i, which is common to both of these terms. So we can pull that out the front. We can just factor that out. And that's going to give us this. So we've got the following. We have h bar on i, and then we have some brackets. So everything in the brackets, I'm just going to put over here. So let's expand this out using the product rule for differentiation. Now, first what I want to do is I want to differentiate with respect to f and keep phi constant. So that's going to give me df dx, and I want to keep phi constant. And then the next one, what I'm going to do is I'm going to do the opposite. So I'm going to have a plus sign. And then I'm just going to have f, keeping f constant. I'm going to act with the derivative on phi. That's going to give me d phi dx. And then what I want to do is I want to take this term. So I've already factored out this h bar on i. So this is just going to give me minus f. And we're going to have d phi dx. And then I want to put some brackets over here and close it over there. So we get one term from this guy. We get f and then the derivative of phi. And then from this term, we also get an f, the derivative of phi. But there's a minus sign over here. So these guys are actually going to cancel each other out. So we're actually going to get 0 over here. And the only term that's going to be left is this term over here, h bar and i times the derivative of f. And then we have a phi over here. I'm actually going to write that in a slightly different way. So I'm going to write it over here. What we're going to get is I'm going to move this i up here. That's going to turn into a minus i. So I'm going to get a minus i h bar. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to write this in a slightly different notation. I'm going to write it with a prime notation for the derivative. So this is going to be f prime. And I'll explicitly say we're differentiating with respect to x because this is just a function of x. And then what I'm also going to say is that we have phi over here. So phi of x. And what I can also do is I can add a little hat to say that this is the position operator. So this has just come from this term. The i has turned to a minus i when I moved it to the top. And we still have that h bar. 
we still have this derivative, but I'm just using an alternative notation. I'm using the prime notation for the derivative. And I've specified that it's a function of the position operator. And it's acting on this test function, which is also a function of position. So phi is a function of position. Now let's identify something very important. What do we have over here? We have this commutator. This commutator is acting on this function. And that's the same as this combination over here acting on the function. So what can we conclude? Well, we can conclude, or right underneath, we can conclude this relationship. It's a very special relationship. We can conclude that the momentum, when we take the commutator with the momentum and a function of position, that's actually equal to minus i h bar times the derivative of this function. And that prime notation is saying it's a derivative. So that's what we've concluded over here from all of this blue derivation. So minus i h bar times the derivative. There's also an analogous relationship if we swap momentum and position. Let's take an alternative uh, re relationship. Let's take this relationship over here. Let's say we have position instead of momentum. And then let's say we have another function. But it's not a function of position. Let's say it's a function of momentum. And I'll use a different letter so we don't confuse these two functions. Let, let's use capital G because we're going for capital letters. Let's use F and G. That's common notation for functions. And we're going to have G is a function of the momentum operator. And we're going to take the commutator of that. And that's actually going to be equal to something that's very similar to this. It's, it's almost like a symmetric relationship. So we have i h bar over here again. But now what we're going to do is we're going to take the derivative of this guy. But we're not going to differentiate with respect to position. We're going to differentiate with respect to momentum, because that is what this function depends on. So we're going to have prime notation for the derivative again. And this is a function of momentum. So have a look at this sym symmetry between these guys. The only difference is there's a minus sign over here. And you can actually derive both of these relationships from a more general uh, commutator relationship. So when you have functions of operators inside the commutator, uh, this thing over here is actually just the commutator of momentum and position. So this thing that's multiplying out the front. And it's the same over here. The, the commutator of position and momentum is i h bar. And the commutator of position, uh, uh, sorry, momentum and position, that is minus i h bar. So that's where these factors come out from the front. And when we have a function over here, we have to take its derivative on the outside, when we, we have the result. So these two analogous relationships between position and momentum are very useful. And they're very deep relationships. So these guys all come from the canonical commutation relation, which is what we derived in the previous video. So can you see now how this is very, very important? Because this, this, these types of relationships are, are going to appear very commonly in quantum mechanics. Because we have to deal with position and momentum all the time. We have to describe things in terms of position and momentum. And the fact that position and momentum don't commute is a very fundamental principle in quantum mechanics. That's why this is given a special name. It's the canonical commutation relation. So as a quick little recap, what we did in this video is we defined the commutator. And we also had a, a little recap of the canonical commutation relation. We swapped the order over here, and we found that it introduced a minus sign. That property is called anti-symmetry. Then we took this special commutator, the commutator of momentum and a function of position. And we applied that to a test function. And the result of that, after some algebraic work over here, was this relationship over here. And we, we wrote that down. And then we found another analogous relationship for position and a function of momentum. So you can see this commutator is momentum and a function of position. And this commutator is position and a function of momentum. And the factor at the front comes from the canonical commutation relation. And this, in general, can be proven using a, a commutator relationship. So when you have functions of operators inside of commutators. So there, those are general relationships that can be used to prove this. But I'm just stating the second one as a kind of sym symmetric look at what, what's also going to happen. So you can also derive this more easily if you're working in the momentum representation. But in this video, we were just looking at the position representation. And that's why we defined these guys over here. They came from the position
representation. Remember, these guys are actually uh, not as fundamental as this guy. The canonical commutation relationship, that is far more fundamental. And you can use that to derive all of these guys and the operators uh, in the position representation chip. So now what I want to do is conclude this video. Make sure you watch the other videos in the quantum mechanics playlist. You can find them if you click up here or over here.